Okay, Olive. You can do this. Just gotta kill them one by one. Time's arrows are long range, so I should get in close and kill her first. Sage barely knows how to use her Terrasphere, so I can take her out next, no problem. And since Rosemary's unarmed, I'll save her for last. It's them or me. Not dead, but whatever. Not dead, but whatever. Just a tiny strategic suggestion. Try giving the pumpkins the pumpkin treatment. The head is squishier than it looks. Because the brilliant tactic of slamming your weapon straight to the ground is far too much for Olive the Mastermind. Why is everyone retarded? I'm so tired of everyone being retarded in this show. Also, it is highly convenient that Rosemary just so happens to carry her massive sword on her back everywhere she goes. Don't be cynical, Sage. It's a festival. Sheesh. But all of this collective idiocy and convenience throughout this saga spread over two whole episodes has been in service of this moment, the epic duel between the prime protagonist and the major villainous presence of the show. Naturally, the hero emerges victorious. We already know this. That's just the nature of these kinds of stories. And I could not give less of a crap about either of these clown people. So there's no emotional investment. But how about the fight itself? Is the spectacle at least engaging? Short answer, no. Long answer, well, let's put it like this. It does not exactly hype up the audience when the villain of the hour, the obstacle, the alleged threat, is cowering away from the fledgling hero. Olive seems buffered, if anything, by the fact that Rosemary catches up to her, despite the fact that Olive has her exactly where she wants. It's a narrow, secluded alley. She is alone. It's the perfect place to unleash her magic and destroy Rosemary effortlessly. But remember, retard, so obviously Olive refuses to do the quick and simple thing to achieve her goals. Instead, we are treated to the most infantile, embarrassing, try hard, look mommy, I can do anime too, brand of directing. What the fuck was that? What exactly made the mob topple? Are you... Are you actually a 10-year-old? No adult person with adult person brain would ever think this is cool. So the fight begins, as dictated by the mob. Olive does all of these flips and leaps, not to mention pointless flourishes and suboptimal strikes. She punches Rosemary at one point, even though her weapon is a staff, a long-reach melee weapon. And despite being an ineffective fighter, Olive is still so far beyond Rosemary that she effortlessly sets the pace and Rosemary can barely keep up. If your opponent is this agile, this powerful, then I hate to tell you, but you are done. You are not going to win this battle. That's not how any of this works. Yet still, the fight keeps on going for several exchanges. It's just movement for movement's sake. This is not impressive. Stuff moving quickly on the screen is not impressive. That's not what action is about. Random bullshit for the sake of lukewarm spectacle. Effective duels are all about letting the character showcase their capabilities to the fullest. Like in any other aspect of storytelling, action needs to follow logical cause and effect. If someone is established as clearly being more skilled and physically able than their opponent, then the ending should be obvious and happen fast. Olive gets in lick after lick, beating Rosemary silly, but then she remembers that, no wait, I'm the protagonist, I can just use the power of bullshit second wind to instantly turn the tables. Fuck off, show. Just fuck off. And anyone who writes combat like this, 
fuck you two. These kinds of comebacks do not exist. It's stupid and lame and shatters whatever flimsy stakes the narrative had left at that point. Olive can take down time with a single jab. She barrages Rosemary with dozens of strikes. Yet Rosemary can tank all of it and just push through. Who exactly is the underdog here? Who are we supposed to root for? If Rosemary can take this kind of punishment and shirk it off, then Olive never presented any threat in the first place. If anything, Rosemary is the overpowered juggernaut here, and Olive is the helpless victim getting bullied. And what makes stuff like this even worse, in a way, is that the writers clearly acknowledge the importance of cause and effect. The show is filled with these tiny throwaway remarks, trying to excuse whatever horseshit happens to be filling the screen at any given moment. Its conjuring powers seem unlimited. I thought it was incompatible with old magic. Aloe's an elf, so her powers merged with mine. Sweetie, she'll learn about new magic and spell theory at school. Why would a Trabber be evil? The well was dry. Maybe, without magic, they mutated? But none of these actually explain anything. They only make things more convoluted and contradictory. The writers know that things have to make sense. They do realize this. They are just bafflingly awful at their job. Did her spell bounce off my spell? <laughs> is this my fault? No, Olive turned the city to stone. This is war. No, fuck off, not buying it. You are trying to tell me that the effect of the spell was supposed to be localized within the balcony? Then that would make the villains even more incompetent than they already are. If the spell engulfs the entire city, then at the very least it ensures that the girls get petrified. But if the effect is precise, then what exactly would prevent the girls from simply fleeing the area of effect? Jump off the roof! We know they can! The villain's plan hinges on the heroes being just as retarded as they are. And I should hope that I don't need to tell anyone that this is not satisfying storytelling. No more mistakes. We mustn't call attention to ourselves. You don't want to draw attention? Then how about not using the obvious enormous magic techno party in the sky? How the fuck did no one notice it? It's not like it blends into the rest of the festivities. And furthermore, if the spell bounced from Sage's shield, and apparently multiplied in effect in the process? Then how come the barrier of Amaryllis only shattered, instead of reflecting the spell back with even more power? Any time the show tries to explain or excuse something, they only make things worse. No matter which way you look at this, it's still retarded. It's either retarded this way, or it's retarded this way. The end result is the same. Also, I don't give a shit about Sage feeling guilty for whopping two seconds about something she may or may not have caused. It doesn't lead into anything, so it's useless fake drama. Sage is a Mary Sue, and I despise her with all my being. You know, this kind of looks like the work of a spark spell. A big exclusive one at that. This olive girl must be loaded. Huh. I wonder if I've ever seen her around Spooky City. Well, they just started selling them the last time I visited. There are these little high-tech sparkles with ready-made spells inside. They're super easy to cast. How do they work? You just need a Terra Sphere and a Spark. The Spark spell stays in your Terra Sphere until you deploy it. It's amazing. No, stop. Stop explaining things. You are so bad at it. Ready-made spells that anyone can use? Do I need to bring back the whole teleporting thing? Because I absolutely will! This world should look totally different at this point. Everything would be done with magic. There would be no manual labor. None. Zilch. It would not exist. Parsley's family would be on government welfare. Not to mention the more grim implications. I'm assuming that the Medusa Techno spell is a unique prototype or something like that, not meant for the wider market. 
but still it makes one wonder what kind of wars or gang violence fester in this world. Groups of casters just dubstepping each other to death. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaya Vanderwatt and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.